The New York Art Collection is pleased to introduce to you American artist Hall Grow Two. Hall resides in upstate New York and has been working professionally as a fine artist for over the last 20 years. Since his father is also an accomplished artist, Hall first started painting at the early age of three and hasn't stopped since. Hall is currently a professor of classical oil painting at a college in New York. However, he has years of experience teaching students of all ages. He has shown at one-person exhibitions at numerous colleges, galleries, and museums throughout the Northeast United States. Professor Grote is also in countless private and public collections internationally, including Bristol Myers Squibb, House and Garden, Sheridan Hotel Corporation, and the State University of New York System, along with Michael Douglas and Catherine Zeta-Jones, just to name a few. In 2006, Hall became involved with the new art movement called The Painting a Day, which originated in the United States and has evolved internationally with a global view of fine art. Art is his passion, his vocation, his life. Following a call for what he was born to do, and now he is sharing his knowledge through instructional DVDs. We are delighted to provide the highest quality of art education with concise but thorough communication to an international audience. You will be learning from the best. I am pleased to present to you Professor Hall Grote. Hall Grote 2, welcome back to my studio. In today's demonstration, we're going to tackle classical composition, that one topic that really challenges artists all around the world. Well, now we understand how to make a viewfinder and what it basically is used for. Well, during this little compositional experiment, we're going to have some fun. I've got this really cool martini glass already. Maybe I'll drink it at the end. I also have this uh, beautiful ashtray that's from Paris. Very it's from a very famous restaurant by the name of Maxime's. It's really elegant. It picks up the light. We'll see how we can compose this into uh, this little sort of like narrative scene with the martini. Then a uh, cute little cigar we'll place into the uh, little ashtray. And I actually have a cigar, one of those classic cigar trimmers where you trim off the end. We'll see if we can include that. Then this real bright book of matches from a local Italian restaurant. We'll include that. Let's not go with this. There's a little bit of an awkward situation right here where that point meets that edge. That's considered kissing. Let's move this uh, matchbook back a little bit so it's actually cropped off by the bottom edge of the picture plane. Remember, this is a square format we have here and I'm going to be working on a 12-inch by 12-inch canvas. This, this makes more sense, have that spaced out, and then perhaps bring this in a little bit more. A few other, yeah, that works, that works better. Show the form of that. Maybe turn that back a little bit, so there we go. That, that added space right there works better. So I can spend some time experimenting. So I've got this intersection, I've got this area down here. I could run the watch off here, run it back on. I could then run it off and then perhaps have it come down from the bottom, come, enter from the bottom like. So you think about the dots and then you slowly start to piecemeal it together. Sort of like a little gestural sketch, at least in this case. Let's take a moment to look at these two finished compositions side by side. They're both, in my opinion, relatively successful. I've got this list of compositional things to really consider. It's actually a checklist of 10 points that one must consider upon completing a, a painting. How are the elements space? Obviously, we spent a considerable amount of time looking through the viewfinder and thinking about 
the spacing of these objects and also how the objects are spaced in relationship to the bigger areas of negative space. So in both situations we look at the negative space up above this uh, teapot and it's uh, quite interesting the way it interweaves up and around and the way the fabric all interconnects to the object. So negative space has been considered in both situations here. Overall, is there a sense of variation? Well, there certainly is. Composition contains various values, various uh, colors. There's quite a few different colors and tonalities. Also, there's uh, variation in scale. Big, medium, small, and minute forms in this one.